Hi there, this is Paul. And uh, one of our Kickstarter backers, Christopher Peterson, um, asked me an interesting question today. He said, have you tried using your engine with Ruby Motion?" And I thought, well, no, we haven't, but I guess technically there was no reason why it shouldn't work. So we, uh, we tried it and great, seems to work. So I wanted to just show you a really quick uh, sample of how that all works. So basically I started with the introduction video sample on the Ruby Motion website as a starting point. And I thought, how could we just show very simply how we could style that application via CSS? So because RubyMotion compiles the uh, Ruby code directly, there's no Xcode project per se. So getting Pixate into it, um, I thought would be hard, ends up it wasn't. So the first thing you need to do um, is basically just copy um, Pixate into a vendor directory. Now in our case, we're still in development and you know, early, not even alpha yet, but uh, one of the components of Pixate is uh, called StyleKit. So what I did is I copied our PX StyleKit framework directly into the vendor directory, as you can see here. And then in the rake file, I just added this line. After a little bit of Googling, I found that you could say app.vendorproject, give it the path to the framework, say that it's a static uh, library, give it the product name and where the headers are located. So I'll just type rake. And there you go, so this is the introduction video sample. So again, it's very simple, but I thought, hey, let's try, uh, let's try some basic styling using Pixate. So um, again, all I did is I dropped our library into the vendor directory and added the one line to the rake file, and that's it. Now I just add, uh, for now, it's called default.pxss, essentially it's, a, it's CSS for Pixate. And uh, I'll start very simply by, uh, let's just, uh, Let's style the label, for example. So I'll just paste some code so I don't have too many typos. So that's it. I'll just say for label, make the color red. And we'll go back here and do rake. And there you go. Now you can see the label of actually uh, the tap to start and the button have both turned red because uh, button's using a label. And now let's go and uh, let's do something to the button. So again, I can just say button, give it a background color. In this case, I'll actually do a linear gradient make that a little bigger. I'll set the text color here to yellow instead of the default red from above, give it a little bit of corner radius as well. So I'll save that, go back and rake again. And there you go. Now you see we've got our red label, we've got our nice gradient button with rounded corners uh, with a yellow thing there. Okay, let's say now we want to change the background color of, of the whole thing. So we'll say view, then we'll say background color and let's make it kind of not pretty. We'll just say green. And now we'll run again. There you go. The problem is it made all views green. So that's probably not what we wanted. So let's go here. Whoops, let me just clear that up. So what does that mean? Well, how do you do that? Well, what's interesting is now, for example, you can go into the code if you like, and you can say, um, no, I wanna only style a specific view. Well, how do you do that? It's actually pretty easy you essentially just add an ID to your view. So in this case, we'll say style ID and we'll give it a name. Let's just call it my background. So what I've done is we've added style ID to the default view. Now I can go to my CSS and I'll say not all views, but how just my background. So, whoops. So now when we run the application, you can see what it's done. It's now made the background that I specified green and left everything else alone. And then what's nice is you don't have to use solid colors. You can use uh, gradients as well. So for example, let's say we go from black to white at 45 degrees. And notice at this point, I just have to rerun. Um, there's actually no compiling required. Here in this case, it's just updating the resource. Um, in theory, we could update that resource dynamically even from, from the server side. And one final step just along those lines, let's say we add a second button. Now we'll do that in code, of course. We'll just, let's just do it here. And again, I've already typed that. So there you go, just same thing, another button. And now when we run, now you'll see that not only have two buttons been added, but again, they've both been styled. And you could take the same approach. We could assign an ID to the second button and then style that differently. Anyway, we're really excited that Pixate works essentially out of the box with Ruby Motion. I think it opens up an interesting 
uh, possibility there to build your applications in Ruby, style them with CSS, um, and really create some very dynamic applications. Thanks a lot, and please uh, back our Kickstarter project by going to pixate.com. Thank you.